and welcome to our worship this week. As you can see, I'm out in the garden. I've been filling up my bird feeders. I got a new bird feeding station for Christmas and I'm hanging lots of different bird feeders with different seeds and nuts and suet all in it. I'm hoping to encourage some different birds for the big garden bird watch next weekend. I wonder what you've been up to this week as we all stay safe at home. Finding things to do can be tricky or it can be easy. It depends whether you've got a hobby or an activity you enjoy doing at home. Today we're going to think about people being called from their homes by Jesus to follow a different way of life by following him. We're going to think of the call of the fishermen. We're also going to have a bit of a Scots flavour to our service today because tomorrow is Burns. So in our tunes today, we'll be taking a travel around Scotland. We started hearing the tune Glasgow and throughout our service today, we'll have tunes from places all over Scotland, as well as our reading in Scots. Burns was a man of the people and his poetry was particularly famous because it brought people together in community using shared experience and shared understanding as well as shared language. So we're going to think about a community built around language as well as a community built around song and a community built around following Christ. But we open our time by praying together. Please join me in prayer. Lord God, they called you the word of life and so we gather together to hear you. They called you the maker of the world, and so we gather together to praise you. They called you the one true God, and so we gather together to give you thanks. Our God, we come to you in prayer, speaking to you in the languages of our hearts, whatever they may be. We cry out our hearts and our pains, we praise you for our joys. We whisper our regrets and our sadness. We call to you each in our own tongue and you hear us. And in the silence, we listen to you to speak to us as you do in your own way and in ways that each of us can understand whatever our accent, our dialect or language. Our God, we come and we ask for your forgiveness for those things that we've said or done or left unsaid or undone that could have caused hurt to others. For the times that we could have and should have said sorry but didn't. For the times we used words that were harsh and unkind and excluding rather than using our language to build bridges. We know we are forgiven and that we can start anew. Help us to be people of your word, your very word, Christ in us. Speak through us to all whom we meet, that we might follow you in our lives. Amen. We're going to start by singing a wonderful hymn to the tune of The Road and Miles to Dundee. Please join us in singing God's praises.
our reading today is in Scots and it's my dad, Bill Chalmers, who's going to read for us. Mark's Gospel, Chapter 1 Fishers of Men Now after that, Jack got, Jack got to jail and Jesus came to Galilee crying a Gospel of God. It's time has come. The kingdom of God is near the hand. Repent and believe in his gospel. Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee when he came on Simon and his brother Andrew, casting their nets into the water. They were fisher folk. Jesus says to them, Come with me, and I'll mark you fishers of folk. And straight away, they forsook their nets and get away with him. He hadn't again very far when he saw James, Zebedee's loon, and his brother Jock, sitting in their body, men in their nets. He cried to them, and leaving their father in the body, and with a crew, they get, get off with him tea. Our next stop on our journey around Scotland takes us just up the road. French Dundee, I to the hills will lift mine eyes. When Jesus heard that John had been put in the jail, he went off to Galilee. From then on he started his preaching, saying, Turn for your, turn for your sins and turn to God. Now one day, as Jesus was taking a wee donder along the beach, he saw twelve brothers, Simon, Peter and Andy, casting their nets into the water. Come on with me, Jesus said to them. And I'll teach you, not to catch fish, but to catch men. Right there and then, they left the fishing and went with him. A wee bit further along the beach, Jesus saw two bear brothers, Jimmy and John, mending their nets with their father, he that was Kent Zebedee. Jesus called to the brothers, and at once they left their father, and went along with Jesus. Did our reading today make sense to you? Could you understand it? If you did, it probably means that you're Scots, or you've at least been around Scots long enough to understand a story telt in Scots. It's a way of including people in language. But it can also be a way of excluding people with language. Because if you don't understand the Scots, then you feel left out. You feel that that story isn't for you. Over the years, we've done a lot of that in the church. And it's something we're very sorry about. Because we often use the authorised version or the King James Bible. And it used... Impressive and large words with these and those and wherefores. And it put people off because they couldn't understand it. They didn't know what it meant and they felt that those stories weren't for them. And that's a shame. Because Jesus came to people just as they were and spoke in their own language. The wee man fe Nazareth went up the coast to Galilee and spoke to fishermen on a beach and I'm pretty sure he didn't use highfalutin language. So whatever your language, 
whether you found today's reading easy to follow or not, I hope the idea of Jesus calling, calling everyday folks in everyday language can call to you and to your call to ask others to follow Jesus too. Jesus walks along the waterfront and he sees the fishermen gathering their nets or cleaning their nets and he doesn't use fancy language. He doesn't use great high Hebrew or even the language of the Romans or the Greeks. He calls to them and simply says, follow me. Come with me. Be part of my family. Be part of my gang, my tribe, my group of friends. Follow me. Come, learn with me, learn from me. Because if you do, I'll make you fishers of men. Sometimes I think we place so much emphasis on having to be X or Y or no A or B in order to call people to Jesus. We seem to think that it's not our responsibility. Someone else will do it. Someone who is more qualified or more eloquent. Someone who knows the words to say. Someone who knows the course to use. Someone who's done the prep work. But the truth is, we're all called to make disciples. And making disciples isn't a difficult thing. It's simply saying, follow me. See what I'm doing, see how I live my life. And learn from me. Follow me. Fishermen are well known even today for the close community in which they live. Fishing communities are by necessity very tight-knit and that's because when the men are on the boats they form cohesive groups, families. They work closely together, they sleep closely together, they eat together, they are there for one another, they are a brotherhood on that boat. And whenever something happens, it's all for one and one for all, as it were. The community back on shore is equally there for one another because they all know what it's like when a boat doesn't come in on time. They all know what it's like when a catch isn't what it should be. And when a catch is beyond what they could expect. It's a shared communal sense. One of the amazing joys of the last few weeks despite the January blues, has been the story of a young postie who made sea shanties go viral on the internet. He used a social media app called TikTok to record himself singing some sea shanties. From this, I was reading today, the young man in question has given up his job as a postie because he's been offered a record contract and that's because millions upon millions upon millions of people all around the world have been listening to his sea shanties. In fact, he started a craze. And so more and more and more people are posting themselves singing sea shanties. I've got a little clip of one for you to listen to. And it's the postie in question. Others forming the different levels of music within a sea shanty, just a wonderful choral rendition of a sea shanty for us. And I chose one that we probably all know quite well. What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What will we do with a drunken sailor? What will we do with a drunken sailor? What will we do with a drunken sailor? Early in the morning. Way, hey, and up she rises. Way, hey, and up she rises. Way, hey, and up she rises. Early in the morning. 
Shave his belly with a rusty razor. Shave his belly with a rusty razor. Shave his belly with a rusty razor. Early in the morning, way hey and up she raises. Way hey and up she raises. Way hey and up she raises. Early in the morning. Put him in a long boat till he's sober. Put him in a long boat till he's sober. Put him in a long boat till he's sober. Early in the morning. Way, hey, and up she rises. Way, hey, and up she rises. Way, hey, and up she rises. Early in the morning. Sea shanties bind communities together. They bind men on a boat or on a ship. It gives them a good rhythm to work to. It gives them a shared sense of story, a shared sense of history and a shared sense of camaraderie as they each find their own voice within that song. Burns is famous for writing poetry that everyday men and women could relate to. When he writes about field mice in a ploughed field, when he writes about pious old Wooly who reads his Bible and says his prayers. Folks knew what that meant. They saw that in their everyday lives. And when he talked about a haggis being the finest of food, many folks around the whole of Scotland could relate to that because a cheap and tasty meal made with oatmeal and Mutton was a great meal. It may not have been the fancy ragouts of France, but it was still a fine fare to sit around a table with. Shared community built together through poetry and, of course, song, because Burns wrote a lot of songs. Shared community building up that sense of who we are. This year we miss having our burn supper at the church. We miss hearing Te Amus and Te Haggis. We miss our shared camaraderie around tables with food. We miss the opportunity to reach out to others, to say follow me, by simply inviting them to a meal, to sit around a table of haggis and neeps and tatties and usually some cranachin or some a clouty dumpling for pudding and a chance to blether. We'll miss that. Although on Monday night at church on Zoom, there was some idea we might do Burns in July um, should this, um, COVID allow and we'll maybe try and get together later in the year to have that camaraderie and that fellowship, that friendship, that time together around a table and still enjoy later in the year. I hope we can. be something to look forward to, wouldn't it? When Jesus calls the fishermen, he's calling them into community. He's calling them away from the community they know into forming community with him. He's forming community with them to follow him, to learn from him, to travel with him wherever he goes. I wonder where we travel with Jesus and where it takes us. It certainly took me from Dundee to Edinburgh and then to Forfar. And I'm sure for many of you, you'll have your own stories of where God has led you through Jesus, through your lives. A bit like the communities of the fishermen and of the Burns community, we together are joined in song. It's a long time now, nearly a year since we all sang together in church. But we're all still joined in that sense of singing communally, being part of our worship, being part of our praise, being part of how we express our faith. And so we're going to continue our journey around Scotland now as we're going to sing a little bit of a couple of songs and then we'll move on to our prayers for others and then another final hymn. But please, as you're singing, think of the journey around Scotland. Think about the people of Scotland. Pray for them as you sing. Think about the community you belong to. Think about how you could 
include more people in that? Who could you say to, come, follow me, using everyday language, not worrying that you're saying the right words or using the right phrases, but just using everyday language, saying, follow me, come and see, like we heard last week, and make people part of this community. For our next tune, we're heading north. It's Crimmond. We're heading up and west to the Lewis Folk Melody. Our prayer today is by Jean Hale. Lord, how hard this pandemic has been on us all. We miss seeing our loved ones, family far away, colleagues and friends. Give us the strength to continue, to keep busy, to keep in touch by phone, email and Zoom, so that those we love can see us and share in our lives. Even when the skies are grey, the world outside is cold and the news depressing. Lighten our hearts with your love and understanding. I pray for my extended family here and overseas. They too have suffered lockdowns, but for them the days are brighter now. May it be so here. I pray for all those who serve on the front line, our medics, nurses, carers who have done so much the scientists who continue to challenge this virus and who have given us such hope with their vaccines. I pray for the teachers, the pupils and the parents tackling, tackling learning in such new ways. May they soon be able to return to their classrooms, their friends and to play. I pray for all the volunteers still giving their time to keep essential services running groups here in Forfar keeping in touch with their members, adopting new technology for meetings, serving our community in so many different ways. I pray for our church family here in St Margaret's, separated but joined together in prayer. May we all have good health and strength to see this through, to be together again in the normal way. And we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We sing together to the tune of Kelvin Grove. Will you come and follow me?
thank you for joining us for worship. It's been so good to see you. I really hope that you feel part of our community. I hope that hearing the sea shanties of the fishing communities, the Scots of Burns, and of course we've got our grace at the end, which is the A Fond Kiss, and our hymns. I hope that our music and our words today have helped you feel part of community. And I hope it's encouraged you to call others to follow Jesus too. Because we don't need highfalutin language. We don't need fanciness. We just need to be willing to go where people are and say, come, see, come with me, follow me and see where the adventure leads. I pray that you all stay safe and stay well and stay at home. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love, this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>